2012 Cyclones training camp began, as always, at the team apartment complex. And as players filed in, some returning, some new, the routine started the same way, with plenty of paperwork. It has become the typical rite of passage for Cyclones players. They document everything, from their medical history to their playing background, and everything else in between. After a brief meet and greet period, it was time for Jared Scaldi to address the 2012 batch of Cyclones hopefuls for the first time. You know, you're always being evaluated, you know, on the ice, off the ice, and I think the biggest thing as coaches is habits. You know, we want to see your practice habits, you know, how you guys practice, you know, and, and, and you know, it, it goes a long way because how you're going to practice, how you're going to play. You've heard it since, you've all, well, since we've all been playing, but I think it's very important, guys, to understand that Every single day, on the ice, off the ice, you're being evaluated, okay? And it starts tomorrow, it starts right now at the, the way you go to Beacon, it starts at the uh, dry land training tomorrow, it starts on ice, and then into practice on Saturday, is you're being evaluated on your practice habits and how you approach the game, because there's gonna be some tough decisions. Definitely there's gonna be some tough decisions, and if it's between two guys, and we like his habits, and we like the way he conducts himself on the ice and off the ice, it can make for an easier decision for us. So make decisions hard for us this year. Well, there's, a, there's still a lot of uncertainty on uh, exactly how it's going to affect us. I know for sure we are going to get a few extra players down than we, we initially thought throughout the summer. So, uh, you know, we're monitoring that. I think that's going to make this camp very competitive because, uh, you know, some, some young guys trying to make this team have got to put their best foot forward and some returning guys have got to impress also because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we have to make room for, uh, for our affiliated players. Um, that said, uh, you know, we want the best players possible to put uh, to win a championship here and, and, and move forward. So um, makes camp very competitive. New Cyclones assistant coach Matt McDonald also had his first chance to speak to the team. Basically, we're going to be getting the trickle down effect, which I'm sure everybody here knows what that is. Might be a little more than what we expected, but it doesn't matter. You guys got to put your best foot forward, and I mean every time. Fill out the paperwork today. You guys think it's funny? Just put your name, you know, number. Oh, I was here last year. Who gives a shit? That matters. Everything matters. Showing up tonight, beacon. That matters. On time matters. So listen, just do everything you guys can, because what you guys think is not important to us is, and it could make or break something. So we're just saying, do everything you can to be positive, be in the right mood, because uh, we're looking to have a very successful year. This has been a successful organization and we're going to bring it back. I, I love every minute of it so far. It's been great uh, to see the guys come in today and, you know, just to put some names to faces and stuff like that has been, uh, has been good so far. I'm excited for what comes up this week. Friday morning began for the Cyclones at the D1 Sports Training Complex in Sharonville as the team gathered to undergo individual off-ice testing. The trainers assessed everything from how high they could jump to how strong of a grip they have. I think it's important to you know, test the guys and you know, kind of see what kind of work and commitment they put into their programs this summer. So I think this is a good test for them. Um, you know, the data we, uh, we uh, compile, I think, really gives us a good idea of where, uh, where everybody's at and, and again, the commitment and the work they put in in their programs. One of the players' least favorite stations was the plank, and the word was spreading fast. What do we have to do? Two minutes? Two minute plank? <laughs> yeah. Like it's the most preposterous thing you've ever heard. <laughs> like, two minute plank? Like a minute or something. No, it's yeah, like, a minute, like, ten minute ten straight. I'm more of a 10 second plank. 16, 10, you gotta beat. You gotta get up to here, boss. Now you beat it. 17-6. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Got one more. Right now you got the record, big cat. Meanwhile, newcomer Kobe Yas tried out his football skills. It's a work in progress. EA Sports, it's in the game. <laughs> I didn't know you was here. Like, Koba. <laughs> Later that day, players arrived back at U.S. Bank Arena to complete one last test before kicking off a full day of drills on Saturday morning. They would each strap on some of these heart monitors to assess their cardio abilities. 
and team captain Matthew Aban was up first. Hello. Aban skated at full speed around the ice, attempting to impress the trainers and the coaching staff. But he says it's just another day at the office. Today was just a work day, a uh, lot of testing. Um, I mean, it went pretty well uh, for me. Anyway, um, we'll see uh, for the end of the rest of the group, but uh, so far a good day. However, this is just the beginning. For tomorrow, the first full day on the ice begins. As Saturday morning broke, most of the team began their day in the video room as coach Jared Scaldi opened with a video overview of the systems the players will be using throughout the season. One thing that's important, you know, we're doing two-on-ones a lot of times, you know, the most important thing is keep your feet moving. Okay, forwards, you know, let's not try five. We get a two-on-one situation like this. You, know, you got to make a decision. You know, a lot of times guys, they'll look, they'll look, they'll look, they'll look, they'll get themselves, they'll paint themselves in a picture like that, and you take yourself out of scoring opportunity. You got to make a decision early. You know, there's that gray area here where the defenseman hasn't committed to anybody. If you can get that pass as he's backing up, make that pass early. Now the goalie's got to adjust, everybody's got to adjust, or make that decision early that you're going to shoot it from a certain spot here. Okay, don't paint yourself in an area in here. Get to an area where you got to make that decision whether you're going to make that pass or you're going to shoot it. Well, I think it's important, uh, first of all, camp to show these guys what we're trying to achieve here, what our, what our systems are and, and what our goals are. And so, you know, I thought today was a good opportunity to start up with some offensive opportunities and some entries. So uh, we showed up some great score, goal scoring clips, some stuff on how we want to enter the zone. And uh, I thought they executed really well. So I think putting this stuff together for training camp is very important as the week rolls along. We'll be touching on different areas of the game from defensive zone to neutral zone to our forecheck and our power play and PK. So, uh, you know, today was a great opportunity to get the guys out for the first time, show them the video, show them what we're trying to achieve. And uh, like I said, I think it really helps for the on ice uh, execution when you can spend 15, 20 minutes in the morning and go over what we're trying to achieve for that afternoon. At that very same moment, three other Cyclones were beginning their days a bit differently. David McDonald, Andrew Hotham, and Jared Gomes were all headed to San Antonio later that afternoon to join the Cyclones' AHL affiliate for their training camp. Now in his first full season as a pro, McDonald tells us he's excited for the opportunity. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm an older guy, so uh, it was good to get that, that uh, invitation. So I can go down and experience that. I don't have any expectations of, of what it's going to be like, but try to just go down and, and, and play my game and hopefully contribute a bit and, and we'll see what happens. McDonald and Hotham have a great familiarity as they were defensive partners for four seasons at St. Mary's University. I think it's a huge difference uh, just even skating around with them uh, the last few days. It's, you know, we, we played as D partners for four whole years in university. We won a couple of U.S. championships and we won a national title playing as defense partners. So. Uh, you know, we have that, uh, we're familiar with each other in that aspect and it, it's great. You know, if we can get the chance to play together this year, it'd be good and, you know, hopefully it'll work out for us. Uh, you know, whenever you have success with one player, you know, you know each other, you know how each other plays and, um, you know, playing with him no matter what team you're on, you know, makes it a lot easier. So the fact that he was here for a bit last year too makes it a lot more, more, easier for me to transition into the team and you know he knows the systems and he can teach me and you know still play our type of game. You know AHL there's always there's always jobs out there and if they come down the East Coast it's fine but you know you're here and you know we're trying to get to the next level which is obviously hard and you know people don't really consider but you know this is our job and you know and when we're uncertain about our future you know it kind of you know plays in the back of their mind but you know, those are the things you can't worry about. You know, the walkout is what it is, and you know, those are things you can't control. And the things you can't control are coming to camp and working hard and, you know, trying to do your best to make the team and, you know, continue throughout the year. Once those three players went on their way, the rest of the group began their preparations for the first full day on the ice. And after a quick warm-up skate, Coach Scaldi explained the first drill of the day. Pucks are here, pucks are here. Ten. First two guys go, third guy. Let's go as D-men though, okay? D-men jump out, jump out here, pass to this guy, two on one, and we'll add a third forward to that. One, two, this guy here can kind of button hit, hook fourth guy in line, hit the guy in the middle, D's out, you can spin it either way. Let's make sure we have middle lane drive, we're driving, dot line is your guide here, okay? 
team captain Matthew Aban has been through this routine many times before. Now in his sixth season with the Clones, he is approaching several team records and continues to lead by example. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Aubin says while he's comfortable with where he's at physically, it takes time to get back into regular season form. I think I'm in good shape. I just think I need to get the, um, the pace of the league. You know, like you come back from off season, you had practices and stuff, but it's not the, the same thing. Uh, I think after uh, with the first week, I'll be uh, at the point where I am, where I want to be, and uh, ready for the season. Having won two Kelly Cups during his Cyclones career, missing the playoffs last season was tough to stomach. Yet, the captain says that's what drives him to stay at his absolute best. Yeah, I mean, when you live the winning the Kelly Cup twice and then, uh, like you said, not making the playoff, it's hard. It's, it was hard on everybody, especially the way we finished the season. I, I thought we deserved uh, better, uh, but uh, especially when you get out that early, it's such a long summer. And uh, I mean, I'm not the biggest uh, working out guy. I like, uh, I like to play and I like to be around the guys and uh, the summer was way too long. So I think uh, we have a great team this so far and we might have more player, even more player coming. So it's gonna be a great year, I think. Now, Avi takes this uh, captaincy very seriously and I think uh, everybody needs to develop into that, that, that C, you know, and that, that, that leader. And I think uh, Matthew last year, I think took strides uh, early on that uh, identified him as a leader of this hockey team and uh, you know he's going to continue to get better. Uh, any leadership role you need support and I think he's got a great support cast around him and guys like Mike Pellick and Dan Eves and Mike Leambus but you know most importantly for, for guys like Avi and any leaders you need some good followers also and I, uh, there's nothing wrong you need to be either leading or following and I think we've got some guys that understand the roles around here and are going to be supporting Avi, supporting our leadership group and, and developing themselves so I think it's a good mixture of guys we have here. I think the camaraderie is really good, which really helps when you're trying to, uh, a guy like Abby trying to lead this team. I try to uh, try to make everybody comfortable around the team, especially the new guys. I, th I think I'm going to just do the same thing as I did last year, uh, trying to be a good leader uh, on and off the ice and try to uh, help out the young guys uh, the most that I can. Ellie's got the pass, you're stepping out, Mike, play a two on one here. Same thing, two on one, if you want to cross, cross, if you want to drive, drive, okay? While it's still very early in camp, Coach Scaldi says he's happy with the effort that he sees. I thought things went really well today. I think it helps out having uh, returning players and the leadership that we have and it moves the uh, practice along. So I thought it went well. I think there's a few guys surprisingly that uh, you know you don't, might not know so much about that I thought uh, you know had a good uh, first impression today. So uh, overall I thought it was a great, uh, great on ice session and uh, I look forward to get back out there tomorrow. Saturday concluded with a game called Juice Boy, a one-on-one -on -one challenge with the goalie. If you score, you're safe for another round, but miss and you're out, with the loser having to deliver the all sport to everyone else in the locker room. <laughs> Being a veteran, Aubin knows exactly where he's going to pick his spot. I'll go after two Next time on Making the Cut. It's pro hockey. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. I think everybody's uh, had a bit of nerves coming in, um, but uh, they definitely have been showing great potential and uh, are not making any easy choices for us. Watch as the intensity rises and the countdown to cut day continues. <laughs>